Now, once we have learned the growth oriented definition or the growth definition by Paul Samuelson, where he considered, you have seen where he considered human behavior, the income earning aspects, the problem of choice and the scarcity as given by uh, uh, Robbins and then the welfare aspect given by Marshall. Now, then he has also incorporated about the future, the growth part how it is being distributed among people and time consideration has been in the either being present in the future used in the future generation or in the a uh, present generation or in the future generations to come so definitely he has considered something more of incorporating the definitions of robinson's and marshall so now the features if we take the most comprehensive one the most comprehensive definition of economics as given by different uh, eminent economists, Samuelson's definition or the growth oriented definition is considered as the most comprehensive one. And that's why it has been criticized also very less. So here we don't have any criticisms. We need to learn only the features. Okay. Now focus on economic problems like the problem that unlimited wants, uh, limited resources or scarce means. Then you have the problem of choice because resources are alternatively used and the problem of choice how money is being used money being utilized in earning and spending uh, money in earning process money earning process and how it is being uh, spent okay so all this has been considered as the problems of the economy has it be, uh, that's why uh, it has become one the focus was, was there on the economic problems of the present uh, generation and the upcoming one we are coming later in the next for the future generation long term perspective now he talked about distributing them now or in future where he mentioned law that means he has considered not only of the present situation but he also thought that the economic activities should how they are consumed how the income is being done how the consumption is being done not only the present generation distributing them over time he mentioned distributing them over time. So that means the approach has become a dynamic approach, not a static one. The growth part has been incorporated that over time means now not only in one point of time, but over time means how the growth, the growth aspect, the, how the economic resources are being utilized in production of different goods and services distributing them among people or groups of people as he told in the economics is concerned with all these so he talked about the time difference that means you know, that is the dynamic approach we call it a dynamic approach okay universal problems now this is one he not only gave stress on the present economy like uh, where goods are exchanged in terms of money he also talked about that these problems existed uh, when there was barter system if we consider that goods are being exchanged with goods goods are being exchanged with goods the barter system of economy okay there also you may have studied in your history in some uh, uh, in some of your junior classes that when goods are exchanged there were time when currency was not there money was not there money was not considered as a universal medium of exchange so then goods were exchanged in terms of good. Now as economy progressed, civilization progressed, lot of problems were there in the barter system. So the problem with the, the money came into existence, money as a medium of exchange came into existence. So the universal problem means whatever problems we had, this problem of scarce means problem of unlimited resources, problem of choice. They were also there in the barter economies, barter economies and also and definitely they are also present in the money exchange economics where the goods are exchanged in terms of money so it's a universal problem and finally as we told that the definition covers all the aspects more or less in economics including the growth and development part so it's not only compre comprehensive but it's also has considered all the aspects as much as possible in the definition we call that's why we call it a broader perspective uh, as the, the definition as a broader perspective. So the features of Samuelson's definition and the definition, learn them very nicely, is a very important one. 
so though it's very big it's uh, uh, because you know he has covered all the aspects that economics covers the subject economics covers so it has become a bit lengthy but still you have to study and memorize it and learn it as professor samuelson has given it okay and the features the captions along with the explanations in brief